Good morning, good morning, YouTube family and those all across the land and all over the YouTube viewing area. Good morning, good morning, St. Paul Christian Fellowship family for you who are out, um, not feeling well, not doing well, may have to work on today or whatever the situation may be, just resting in on a Sunday morning. Good morning to you. I'm Pastor Antonio Willard here at St. Paul Christian Fellowship, 2238 Courtney Avenue in the lovely city of Norfolk, Virginia, 23504. With my right hand, trusted right hand man, Dean Carl Jones, so glad he's back. He had to take some leave of absence, and so he's back now, and we are coming back to you now stronger than ever. And so uh, we'd love that you subscribe. We love that you would like this. If you don't like it, if you don't want to subscribe to us, Please comment, tell us what we're doing wrong or tell us what we're doing right or comment about the message or the subject matter or if you have topics that you would like uh, us to talk about, then all you would have to go to is our website and uh, that information, we'll give you that information. But anyway, uh, we're here at St. Paul Christian Fellowship in Barra Park in the lovely city of North Virginia. If you're ever in the 757 region or as close as Richmond or North Carolina, you want to come and fellowship and you just want to have a good time in the Lord. We do that here. We, we worship God here. We serve God. We love God here. And it shows. And so I uh, want to share with you this morning, just want to come to you with something um, that is very uh, pressing in my heart today because of the fact that I have done so many funerals in the last couple of weeks. In less than two weeks, I'm working on number six Tuesday. I've done two weddings uh, in that time frame, and I've done on this coming Tuesday, it will be six eulogies, celebrations of life for folk that have gone on to be with the Lord or in God's hand, as I tell most folk that uh, their loved ones is in the hands of God, because I don't know if they knew Jesus Christ and the pardon of their sins or uh, knew Jesus as Lord and Savior? I don't know. So what I do tell people is that they're in God's hands, and that's where they are. Uh, all of us, you know, when we leave this earthen vessel, when we leave this flesh, this body, well, the soul, the ruha, the breath of God, it goes back to him, comes back to him. And so we're in his hands regardless, regardless of what we may face on the other side, whether it's the beam of seat, where those who are in Christ will face Christ as the judge, and he's going to judge the, the, the uh, living and the dead. And so, or that we may face the great white throne, those who rejected the good news, those who denied Christ, those who doubted, disbelieved, they will face God at the great white throne. And so, uh, you know, uh, you're going to be in the hands of God when you leave this place. <laughs> you're going to be in God's hands. Believe it. Trust and believe. You're going to be in his hands. And so I want to share with you this morning something that's pressing to me because, you know, in these last couple of weeks, um, I've just had prayer in my heart, prayer just on my mind, saturating my soul, just dealing with different things that are going on. Different people are going through so many different things. And it's all about how you respond to it. But I can tell you, you need to start in prayer. You need to have a conversation with God. You know, Paul talked to the Thessalonican church in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, and he told them to cease not in praying and give thanks in all things, for this is the will of God for you. And that's what we need to do when we come up against a brick wall, when, we, when we're slammed by the adversities and the trials and the tribulations and testings and the storms of life. It's how you respond. It's how you respond to the heartache and the pain and the grief and the sorrow. It's how you respond because if you know that God is I am, he says in Psalms 46 verse 10, be still and know that I'm God. So when you see when you see where it says be still, that means that God got you. He got you in his hands. He's got you. You you can have the peace of Christ. You can have the joy of the Lord. 
You can have the mercies of God. You can have God's grace. He says, I am. He says, and I will be exalted among all the nations and all the earth. He says, I am. I am your deliverer. I am your peace. I am your redeemer. I am your salvation. I am your perpetuator. He says, I am. I am your joy. I am the fruit of the spirit. You know, you you. It's, it depends on how you respond to what is taking place in your life. And we all go through some hard stuff. I've been through some hard things these last couple of weeks and I haven't just, you know, fell all apart and gone crazy and, and uh, take my burdens to everybody and talk about all my stuff to everybody. I just take my burdens to the Lord. It, it's all in how you respond to it because really in all actuality, in reality, he's the only one that's gonna fix it. He's, he's the only one that can fix it. When you have an illness or sickness, he's the great physician. And whether you get better on this side or you get that ultimate glory by him taking you to be home with him, it's all about how you respond to it. And so let's look at something from Luke's writings this morning. Look, let's look at this, this one verse, Luke chapter 5, verse 16, and it says these words, Jesus often withdrew to lonely places and prayed. Jesus himself, the savior, the master, the redeemer, the deliverer, the great physician, the doctor who can mend broken hearts and regulate minds. And he's a mind regulator and he's a bridge over troubled water. Jesus often withdrew to lonely places and prayed. That word often means that he took time out from his busy schedule, whatever it was, whatever his day was, he took time out, whether it was early in the morning in the a.m. hours, whether it was in the noonday, whether it was in the evening hours at nighttime, midnight, he took time. It said Jesus often withdrew to lonely places and prayed. He got by himself and he got before the Father and he pleaded his case. I stopped by to tell you today that you need to do the same thing. You know, here as a pastor for our leadership, I talk about communication all the time. And the reason why is because people don't get it. That's why I talk about it, because they just don't get it. You know, they, I don't know if they think I'm trying to get in their business or bother them or whatever, but I'm, I'm not trying to do none of that. I'm talking about communication, communicating with me, talking to me, letting me know what's up so that I can understand how I'm going to plan the day, how I'm going to do what I got to do with what, whoever I have around or whatever the case may be, but how we execute service. But you need to communicate, period. A couple that's married is not a marriage. Is there's no communication. And that man and that woman got to talk to each other. I wait for the amens to die down in order for the marriage to be healthy, in order for it to be fruitful, there has to be a line of communication. Parents and, and children, if they don't communicate with one another, there's going to be some stuff going on. That child might turn rebellious because of the fact that that child might believe that the parents uh, have negated them in some way, neglected them, don't care about them. And so don't take the time out to find out what they're doing, what's going on in their lives. And so then they go astray. And guess what? They'll go and communicate with somebody else that will communicate with them, and that might be the wrong person. All right. Communication is vital to any relationship, parent and child, husband and wife, employer and employee, coach and athlete. And most important, God and those who love him. You need to communicate with God. You need to talk to him all about your troubles. You need to tell him all about what's going on with you. I don't care what it is. Listen, he will give you an attentive ear. If you go into the Psalms, you will see where David and some of the other Psalms writer, all they talked about is how God bowed their ear, his ear down and was attentive to their prayers and their cries and their pleas. And that's what we have to do. Sometimes we've got to cry out to them. We've got to talk to them. Sometimes our prayers can be our tears. I wait for the amens to die down. Sometimes 
You know, he can read our tears. You know, the psalmist says that he puts our tears into a jar and he looks at them and they're precious to him. Maybe those are our words because we can't articulate the words. Maybe our tears are our words. Maybe that's expressing our heart or our feelings. And you need to have a talk with Jesus on today. I don't know what it is that you're going through, addictions, or I don't know if your marriage is on the brinks. I don't know if your children a while and out. I don't know if you just lost your job. I don't know if you lost a loved one. However, you need to respond in a way that first starts with communication, starts with prayer. During Jesus's time on earth, Jesus showed us the importance of communication. The gospel tells us of nearly 20 occasions when he prayed to his heavenly father. He prayed in different circumstances. He prayed at his baptism, Luke chapter 3, verse 21, doing brief rests from ministry in Luke chapter 6, verse 12, Be before raising Lazarus from the dead, John chapter 11, verse 41. And he prayed for different things. He prayed for guidance, Luke 6, uh, verses 12 through 13, uh, to express his desires to do his father's will in Matthew chapter 26, verse 39, and to give thanks for food in John chapter 6, verse 11. He communicated with the father. He expressed to the father the things that he stand in need of. I don't know about you on this morning, but I need him for everything. I need him every day. John 15, 5 tells us, Jesus says these words, I chose you, you didn't choose me. He says, and apart from me, you can't do a thing. That's talking about the vine and the branches because without the vine, the branch has no source. The, the branch has no, no resource, no power because it's broke off, it's detached. Now, if you're detached this morning and you don't have no resource, no source, no recourse in Christ, because it's got to be in Christ, then I tell you right now, you're going to be in a sad circumstance. You're going to be in a sad situation. Jesus was a prayer warrior. Here was God himself in the person of the son, the one in whom all the power of the universe dwelled and resided. Yet he turned to God the Father in prayer. As hard as that may be to understand, it's a lesson for all of us to easily grasp. We need to pray. We need to communicate. We need to have a conversation. You can talk to the Father, the Son, or the Holy Spirit because they are the Trinity. They are God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We worship all three of them, and you can talk to all three of them about what's going on with you. If Jesus needed to communicate with God to accomplish his mission, how much more do we need to pray? That's what I'm asking you today. And his mission was what? To go to Calvary, to the cross. Now he was here with us for 33 years. He was on this planet, on this earth for 33 years. But in all of that time, he needed God for everything, the Father. He needed his guidance. He needed his security, his protection. He needed revelation from the Father. He needed everything he needed to be. Listen, the Father, he graces us with food. He blesses us with health, strength. He blesses us and puts us in our right mind. We need him for everything, for everything. Think of what you have to face today. If it is your habit to ask, what would Jesus do? You can be sure from his example that he would pray first. And so let's make that our pattern. You know, I ask this question, what did Jesus do? I don't ask the question of what would Jesus do because I already know what Jesus would do. Jesus would go to the Father in prayer. He would communicate, and that's why Luke 5, 16 says he often went off in a lonely place, which means secluded, private, solitude, you know, where nobody would bother him. It was just him and the Father. Maybe you need to do that on today. Maybe you need to get from around all the distractions and maybe you need to get from around all the noise and all the havoc and chaos and hoopla, all the folk that don't mean you well. You, you might need to just get off by yourself somewhere and seek them out this morning. You might need to just get on your bended knees. Bowing to God is a sign of humility. It is a sign that you are expressing your need for him and that he's our king. Listen, 
We are servants of the most high God. And so this morning, you might have a little talk with Jesus. Tell him all about your troubles. That's what the old folk used to say. After a while, by and by, he'll do something. He will do something. He'll meet you right where you need him to meet you at. He'll come to your rescue like a superhero and he'll wrap his loving arms around you and he'll father you. He'll bring you back. If, you, if you're sick and your body's racked with pain, He'll bring you back. He'll heal your body. He will heal you. I know you think the doctors and the medicines are the healer, but no, the great physician is the healer. Now, Jesus is the healer. The doctors, he's given them knowledge and he's given them wisdom concerning a certain matter. But listen, not even Big Pharma can heal you. Yeah, no, they can't heal you. And so I stopped by to tell you this morning that you need to consider prayer. That's the first thing. And then you need to consider exercising your faith in the only one who can fix your circumstances. Listen, Jeremiah 29, 11 says, I have a plan for you. I'll stop right there. I don't have to go any further. If you read those other words concerning that verse of scripture, it talks about hope. It talks about victory and a future for you. So listen, he has a plan for you this morning. And it's not to pick on you. It's because he picked you out. He picked you out to grow you, to use you for his glory, to bring the kingdom here on earth. You know, the disciples prayed. I'm going to close with this. Jesus said these words in the disciples' prayers. He was teaching the disciples. He said, thy will be done. Thy kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. I'm going to leave you with that thought this morning because I got to go. We got to go. We got two services today. And so listen, with all the deaf, listen, the deaf in Morocco, the deaf in Libya, the floods, the earthquakes, Maui, the fire, and people are all around me are just calling me every day. I'm having to turn down stuff because of the fact that I just can't do it. I'm human and I just can't help some people. Listen, you need to start praying. You need to start talking to God. And listen, you don't have to be eloquent and you don't have to be academic and you don't have to uh, have a seminary degree. You just need to talk to him. You just need to have a conversation with him like I'm having this conversation with you. Come on, we getting ready to leave as we depart from this place, but not your, not your presence, Lord. We pray for your blessings upon people that are struggling right now, that are weak, that are going through things, that have addictions, Lord. And we just ask that you will meet them where they need to be met, that they would start a conversation with you or that you would speak to them and they would speak to you. Draw near to God and he will draw near to you. Until the next time, this is Pastor Antonio Willard, Dean Carl Jones, grace, peace, and mercy. <laughs>